Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pilot of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer 40k Imperium magazine. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop us a comment down below. I love hearing back from you guys, and it goes a massive, massive way to helping the channel too. Now, this week we're on issue 73 of Imperium magazine, and we have our Necron Locust Heavy Destroyer as our mini for week. So, single sprue, uh, fairly easy to build. Two different weapons you can choose for, for, for it though, entirely up to you. Um, I'm personally, I'm going for the bigger weapon because it looks a bit meatier um, and a bit more kind of destructive, but it is isn't, of course always your choice, but pretty decent, pretty cool, and something different as well, which is uh, better than Necron Warriors or anything like that, so not bad. Going into the issue though, of course, we are greeted by the Locust Heavy Destroyers, these being sentient weapons platforms driven only by a desire to end organic life. Locust heavy destroyers are as relentless as they are utterly lethal. Few living foes escape their wrath. So with the locust heavy destroyers they are, there are of course many different destroyer cults each of which favour a distinct method of killing. Those that belong to the locust cults prefer to wield ranged weapons obliterating the living with bursts of destructive energy. Locust heavy destroyers choose to modify their forms to be better to better enable them to eliminate their targets. In place of legs, these flying monstrosities have banks of powerful anti-gravity engines that allow them to traverse rough terrain and provide a more stable platform from which to fire their lethal weaponry. So Talking about their uh, lethal weaponry, you can, or you can of course have the bigger weapon, which is the Enemitic Exterminator, which uh, destroys its targets by violently disrupting their atomic structure. Or of course you can have a Gauss Destructor, so very much like the Gauss rifles that the Necron Warriors can carry and stuff like that. Entirely up to you. Um, I do prefer that Exterminator weapon in all honesty, personally. It's a personal choice. But of course, if you're a Necron player and you want to collect Necrons, if you've got two copies of issues, this issue, you can have two. You can have one of each weapon entirely up to you or both the same, your choice. But really, really good stuff and they are, you know, it's pretty cool. It's not a bad weapon, it's pretty cool. On the other page, of course, you do get its battle record. So it is entirely up to you how you want to record this. So you can give it its unit designation, uh, its gifts of destruction. And the care, of course, because it's a Necron, it does have a decaying feature to it as well. So whether it's, um, being, ra being from a tomb world that was ravaged, a noble family that was destroyed, or even being the last survivor of a conflict. Um, and of course you can you know, take turns and uh, mark its killing tally as well. So pretty cool stuff, just adds to your game. Then we get one of the heroes from 41st Millennium, as per usual, as we're going through a lot of these. Uh, the Sanguinor, uh, exemplar of the host. So. A mysterious entity of unknown origins, the Sanguinor appears only at the Blood Angels' periods of greatest needs. Amongst the Blood Angels, he is a figure of myth and awe. So, the Sanguinor's appearances are rare indeed, and the battles in which he chooses to intercede rarely leave survivors. For this reason, many believe him to simply be a mythical fi figure. Only a some small number of the chapter's most learned individuals uh, know much of Sanguinor's history and can be uh, sure he is not a mere hallucination recounted by survivors of the most horrendous battles. Within the Blood Angel's recluseism uh, lies uh, the Carta Sanguinorium, or Sanguinorium, uh, an iron clasp volume in which is recorded every known occurrence of a Sanguinor's intervention. So in kind of a roundabout way, the Sanguinor is a, a kind of a mythological person who just randomly appears uh, and nobody knows where he comes to, nobody knows really where he goes to and he'll just appear whenever the Blood Angels need him most. Kind of like how the Living Saint can uh, produce and the Adeptus Reutus can sometimes produce a random burst of doves and stuff like that. The kind of magical aspect of Sanguinor is he can randomly appear, helps win the day, and then um, disappears again. So, really, really good stuff. And it's quite interesting to find out as well because he only wears that uh, the death mask of Sanguinus. 
as well so really cool and then we get one of the other blood angels uh, heroes gabriel seth guardian of rage wrathful and dour and savage uh, Gabriel Seth is distrusted even by many of the sanguinary Brotherhood's uh, other ma chapter masters. There is no doubting his effectiveness. So, as you can see, he looks a bit mean. He looks like he's got a bit of a, a, a bit of grim as well. So, on the day he ascended to the position of chapter master, Gabriel Seth listened. Grim faced as the chapter's sanguinary priests presented evidence of the terrible truth. The rate at which their warriors succumbed to madness or death far exceeded their ability to replace their losses. When Seth learned of this, he swore that his chapter would pass into history in proud remembrance and not in whispered rumours of brutality and madness. So obviously they have a lot going on with them uh, from good old the flesh terrors and blood angels and much much more and um, yeah it is where they go um, they are obviously a bit kind of insane but pretty cool it's a bit different it's uh, very very unique and there's a lot to it as well so definitely worth having to read through because they're quite interesting there's a lot of these heroes from the space marines are very very interesting they have a lot of weird history and lore and uh, obviously a lot of uh, unusual properties behind them as well and then we move on we go into one of the other war zones so the fifth the fear uh, expansion so the Tau Empire's Fifth Sphere expansion has been in constant state of conflict since its foundation, assailed by the Death Guard, Gene Steeler Cult and the Imperium. So the first enemy to assault the Fifth Sphere were the Death Guard. After much hardship, Mortarian sons were defeated and the Tau commander Shadow Sun turned her attention to searching for new colonies. Finding worlds not, was, not as diff, was not difficult there, when I can speak. Many fertile planets lay nearby. A large number of these worlds, however, belonged to the Imperium of Man. Shadow Sun offered their inhabitants peace and protection if they would surrender without a fight. The vast majority refused and a brutal war soon followed. So, the Tau, obviously being a, an empire that is all about the greater good and uh, being quite interesting i must admit tau is one of my favorite factions from the 41st millennium they are pretty cool i love their battle suits so tau battle suits look pretty damn cool they look very very much like gundam battle suits so and there are many many different variations so of course there are fire warriors uh, so tau fire soldier foot soldiers are outfitted with hardened armor and lethal guns there is the XV-25 battle suit, which is pretty cool. It's a little bit more rounded than all the others. Uh, and it's a pretty cool battle suit and obviously designed for stealth and to be undetectable. There is the XV-8 crisis battle suit, which is a little bit bigger. There is the XV-85 enforcer battle suit, which is a bit bigger and a bit tougher than that. There is also the XV-88 broadside, which is a uh, outfitted with devastating heavy rail rifle missile pods and much much more and then there is the xv 104 riptide battle suit the one of the largest battle suits available to the tau and it has some pretty damn cool weaponry uh, and it is designed for absolute destruction really really good stuff uh, i i say i really like the tau the tau were quite interesting they have a, they just have that an, int an interesting look um you know and you know we all like a bit of the uh, greater good if you're a fan of hot fuzz and stuff like that so really really cool stuff there you had to build guide fairly easy really there are some small parts but it is actually an easy-ish model to build so i'm not gonna doubt that you'll have any problems with that it's just up to you which weapon you want on him um so your choice in all honesty um whether you want that uh, gauss rifle or if you want the good old enemitic uh, destroyer exterminator uh, your choice but really really cool stuff as you will have noticed as well the base does have three holes in it for the three different parts of everything so you have that main base part which kind of makes it so it looks like he is hovering uh, and then you have a couple of little scenery pieces as well to kind of add to it uh, and uh, yeah you can change them around if you don't want them in that same pattern that they've got but otherwise you'll be fine I'm sure your painting section up to you how you want to go painting it of course if you're following the magazine it does look pretty all right it's not too bad it's pretty good um 
I personally, I think it needs something different to make it look a bit different from that. I think it looks a bit plain and a bit dull in that kind of colour scheme. It needs something else, in my opinion. It needs something that kind of brings out a bit of a different colouring on them kind of side pods, personally. Um, so I personally won't be going with that colour scheme myself. But it works, it does a job, that's my only thing. If it goes in with your uh, kind of current Necron army, you'll be fine, in all honesty. Uh, we have some painting updates as well for things like your Ultramarines and your Adeptus Sororitas, including things like flames and how to make the flames and stuff like that, because you don't want just yellow and red or orange. You do need to add a little bit of black into the ends because then that gives that little bit of a tint and uh, changes how it works and how it looks and makes it flames look a lot better. But it makes your Adeptus Sororitas look really cool. And of course, things like uh, the wood effect and stuff like that on parts of it as well. Definitely worth doing, definitely worth following. But yeah, you'll have a good time with this, all of this stuff. And even with your uh, kind of Adeptus Mechanicus as well, how to kind of just add a little tiny little bit of hints to add a little bit more and make them stand out. So really, really good stuff there. And then we get our good old uh, data sheet for the, Adept for the good old uh, Locust Heavy Destroyer as well only requires four power so fairly easy really uh, and of course it has an anti-tank weapon and a blast weapon entirely up to you how you want to go about using it and obviously your tutorial parts for it depending on how these work including the repulse platform and then finally for this week well not finally uh, and then for this week we have our battle fairly easy 75 power you should have a bit of fun with that we do also, with this week, get a pull-out section as well about Blackstone Fortress and Rogue Trader. This is Rogue Trader Part 3 um, and obviously includes a bit more. So it includes stuff to do with Black Fortress. So if you're interested in Black Fortress, there is, of course, Warhammer Quest Black Fortress to be picked up. It is a board game. It is like a tabletop RPG-style board game. So it works in that kind of way uh, and works very, very differently really really good stuff though and on the other pages all the type of enemies that you will find in the black fortress whether it is zot crute amble urgles beastmen and spindle drones not to be confused with beastmen of the mortal realms although they are very very similar they just generally carry a gun so really really good stuff there and it's quite interesting to read through as i say uh, the blackstone fortress kind of storylines are very very interesting i'm not gonna lie to you they are a little bit more fun they are more roguish and really pretty damn cool so definitely worth checking out if you're into your 40k and you want to have a little bit of a narrative as well to it all and then moving on next week we get our space marine fire strike servo turret we find out about more information about the demons of corn and we also get the rules, of course, for the servo turret to utilize. Another one that will be fairly easy to build, I'm sure. Um, and very, very easy to paint up, in all honesty. And then, issue 75, so in two weeks' time, we'll get uh, our second Hemiotrope Reactor. Very easy to build, very simple. Um, they can connect up to your pipework, of course, and you can choose how you want to build it. You don't have to have them stacks behind it. You can put them on the end if you wish to, which I might do with this one. But a nice bit of scenery it's weird having scenery this late in the run of the magazine you would have thought they would have done it all by now uh, but they haven't but not too bad overall talking of magazines and their runs though however imperium is coming up towards the end of its run obviously we're in issue 73 now and it is only going to go up to 90. in a few weeks time there will be a new warhammer magazine available so if you want to check that out, the link is at the end of this video. Um, it is Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Definitely worth checking out the video at the end because we go through exactly what we're getting in the first 10 issues and it's pretty cool. And also the release date is listed in there as well. So really good stuff and it is coming soon. I'm gonna be picking it up. I'm gonna be doing videos on it and I cannot wait because I love the Mortal Realms and they are more fun. And, um, I can choose some paint different i'm going to do some different painting techniques with all of these ones so um i'm really really looking forward to having a go with them so really good stuff but with that i've taken all your time thank you very very much for watching and i will see you sometime soon bye bye now